I am unsure if this is the page to post this, but it was a close call with a stranger I never want to meet again. This is something that I didn't realize the severity of until I was older. My mom had left me and my brother home alone. It was midday. My brother was 12, maybe 13, so I was about 9 years old. Watching him play Xbox in our living room, he had his headset on talking to his friends when there was a knock from the door in our carport. I run and answer the door without looking. It's a grown man I've never seen before. We are separated by the screen door, which at the time was unlocked. He asks, Are your parents home? Horror washes over me. First of all, he's knocking from the carport, which is strange in and of itself. A stranger would knock on our front door, and our carport is empty. We only had one car, and my mother had taken it. This man knows that my parents aren't home. I'm afraid. I don't know why, but I'm scared. Immediately, my brother in the other room comes to mind. I've never had a father figure. My brother has always been the one who's made me feel safe the strongest person in the whole world. Someone who could protect me in any situation. How most people would regard their father, I think. I feel as though I can barely speak. Wide-eyed, I manage to stutter out. No, but my, uh, big brother's here. Without even a moment's pause, this man reaches for the screen door and starts to open it. Like an act of God, Divine intervention, an arm reaches out from behind me, over my shoulder, and grabs the door. My brother pushes past me, holding the door, forcing the man back with his presence, out into the carport, and closes the door behind him. The man tells my brother he was looking to buy some shitty old swing set that was in front of our yard at the time. My brother comes back in without saying anything to me, puts on his headset, and continues playing. I sit down as well and continue watching him. I don't believe we ever told our mom. Luckily, I never encountered this person again and it pretty much fades from my memory. But as I got older, it became one of the scariest things that's ever happened to me. Creepy, not so much because of what happened, but what could have unnerving how absolutely oblivious we were. I like to think the man was planning to lock me in a room, rob the place, and leave. But people can be so evil. In September of 2018, I had met this guy, Andrew through a mutual friend on her birthday. Andrew had taken an interest in me immediately, but I was kinda clueless until several of my friends said so. Andrew began texting me a lot, and we eventually started hanging out on our own. A couple of weeks pass and we started dating. That's when things started to get weird. Whenever I would hang out with my friends, He'd get passive-aggressive about me not spending time with him instead. One weekend, I had seen him almost every day that week, and on Friday morning we had plans to hang out as well, but I was feeling sick so I decided to cancel. Later that night, I had a Halloween party and was feeling better so I decided to go. He got pissed at me, saying I never wanted to spend time with him and whatnot. Other weird things were happening, but in the end, I told him I wanted to end things via text. He didn't take it well. He constantly would text me, asking me if we could meet up in person and talk, at the park no less, and I just kept saying I thought it'd be best if we didn't. Then he asked my friends for my class schedule. I was a junior in college. They obviously didn't give it to him 
because they knew of all the weird things that were happening. I had to skip one of my classes the next day to make my schedule for next semester, and when I got home, my friend had told me that he went to that same class. My friends didn't give him my schedule. He had went on the website where we make schedules, looked up the class that he remembered me mentioning I was taking, and went to that classroom to basically force me into talking to him. I have never been so grateful to have skipped a class. Even after that, he still tried talking to me until I eventually blocked him on everything. You were a character, Andrew. But you scared me, so let's not meet again. I had this happen to me a couple of months ago, so here's my experience. Here's a little background about my grandpa's house. My grandpa's house is an old house built somewhere around the 1930s or 40s. The house used to be part of an oil field where the land was used for oil wells. The home was probably used for living in or an office for the oil company employees. A couple of years later, my great grandparents bought the land and the house too and have lived in it ever since. I'm not sure if the house is haunted, but to let you all know, my great grandma, who was my grandpa's wife, passed away some time back. My great grandpa is about to pass away soon, which does sadden me. The house does creep me out a bit at night, and does sometimes make me feel like something is watching me. One night, I decided to spend the night with my grandpa. While my grandpa was in his bed asleep, I was laying on the couch unable to sleep. Since I couldn't fall asleep, I went to get up to go use the restroom, since I needed to go. Right when I was about halfway into the bathroom, I stopped in the hallway, hearing something that sounded like a man whispering something in the dark, but I couldn't make it out because the whispering didn't make any sense and was very hard to hear. All I could make out was a bunch of gibberish whispers. The whispering lasted for a few seconds and then stopped. What are your thoughts about this experience I had? Eleven years ago I was dating a guy who hung out at this old trailer with a bunch of other grungy metalheads. They were all in a band and every chance they got we would go there to drink, smoke cigarettes, and jam out. The drummer of their band dropped out suddenly, and they quickly found a replacement. This guy gave me the creeps immediately. He just had this horribly sinister vibe, and his eyes had that demented look any time I met them. I could barely be around him without feeling sick. One afternoon, I head over to the trailer expecting to meet my then boyfriend there so we could smoke a little reefer and listen to some music. Unfortunately, he was not there yet, but the drummer guy was. He and I were the only people there and honestly every fiber of my being was telling me to get the fuck out of there as quickly as possible. But instead of listening to my gut, I stay. I figured my boyfriend would show up sooner rather than later and maybe, just maybe, I was overreacting about this new drummer. He doesn't say much to me at first, just the usual hello, and I sit down on a couch and start reading some random occult book that was on the coffee table. At this point in my life, I thought I knew somewhat about the occult, Satanism in the judo-christian devil-worshipping sense of the word, not in the atheistic self-worshipping sense, and general paganism. I have since done more research and know that this dude's claims were utter horseshit, but anyway. So I'm thumbing through this book, waiting on my boyfriend. 
and suddenly drummer guy sits down beside me. I glance up at him, smile a little, and go back to the page I was reading. He then says, You know, I'm a practitioner of black magic. I couldn't help but laugh. You know that nervous laugh that comes out when all you can think is, Yeah, sure you are, fucker. He looks somewhat offended and says, What, you don't believe me? Do you want me to show you? At this point, I'm staring at him like he's dark, raving mad. But I can tell he knows I'm afraid. I laugh again and say something along the lines of, No, no, I believe you. He starts telling me about Satan and seances and all sorts of weird shit. All the while I'm backing away from him and he's coming closer and closer and closer. I literally felt like his presence was so oppressive I was going to choke. I am not religious, nor am I necessarily convinced of the paranormal or evil in the widely accepted supernatural sense but I was genuinely getting horror movie demonic vibes off of this guy. Plus, with his pushiness and the way he was coming closer, my terrified teenage mind was considering all the ways he could assault me. Thankfully, just when I was trying to plan my escape, my then boyfriend comes in and I make up some excuse for us to leave to go get snacks or something like that. I told him after we left about what happened, and Drummer Guy wasn't in our friend circle much after that. Fun fact, ten years later, he shows up in the arrested reports in my hometown for getting such violent road rage that he jumped out of his car in the middle of an intersection and pulled a full-fledged fucking machete on the other driver. He's since been arrested multiple times for disorderly conduct and resisting arrest. I was driving late at night on I-90 between Deer Lodge and Missoula, Montana. I'm originally from Seattle. I was driving back to Seattle after visiting family in Bozeman and Billings. The stretch of freeway between Deer Lodge and Missoula have some weird small mountain towns along the side, occasionally interrupted by large truck stops. Anyway, it's about 11.30 at night, and I'm on my way to my hotel in Missoula when I notice that I need to get some gas for my car. I stop off in this random small town with one gas station with a 24-hour pump. It had a convenience store attached to it, but it was closed. I get this really weird vibe from the station as soon as I pulled up to the pump. I hadn't turned off my car yet, I had just put it in park and the engine was still running. I was about to shut off my car when, out of the corner of my eye, I see some dark figure come from the side of the closed convenience store and start running towards my car. Some instinct in my head kicks in and I put my car back into drive and got the hell out of there. I look back in my rearview mirror to see a figure chasing after my car for a few seconds. By that time, I make the turn and that gets back onto the freeway. I found a brightly lit truck stop about 10 miles down the road where I filled up my car. Needless to say, that weirded me the hell out the rest of my drive to Missoula and Seattle. I've heard it before and experienced it that night. Strange things happen in the mountains.